Okay, this this is a video that I wanted to bring you guys for quite some time. So I'm, I'm pretty excited today, and uh, you're going to see why very shortly. So make sure you stay tuned right till the end, because I don't know where where this is going. But I can guarantee you, you're going to want to watch it. Okay, so a, a moment ago, I told you how excited I was to come out here and, and have this meeting and, and uh, interview this person. So uh, I'm not going to prolong this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm going to introduce a guy here. His name is uh, Winston Ensi. I hope I said his name correctly. He'll correct me if I'm wrong. But I want him now to uh, to talk a little bit about himself. So I'm Winston Ensi. I'm uh, I was retired now. I was a wildlife conservation officer for 37 years, and. Uh, been out and around the woods a fair bit over the years. So Winston, how many years did you work as a wildlife officer? Uh, 37 years. Yeah, it's, it's quite a while. 37 years, that, that's amazing. Okay, I, I, got another, I got another question for you now. So in your 37 years as a wildlife officer, did you ever go out and do any research or investiga investigations on these large cat sightings that we have here in Newfoundland? Uh, yes, Charlie, uh, uh, probably uh, I would say about half a dozen times over the years, uh, more probably recent times uh, before my retirement, but uh, my memory goes back to uh, early 80s, I think was my first uh, call that I got concerning uh, a sighting of a, what was called a cougar at that time, and uh, very convincing sightings and although uh, we didn't know we, we didn't think we had any mountain cats or cougars you call them so uh, they were preliminary but uh, there was no no proof it's hard to get proof and, uh, and but then over the years uh, it seemed like there was more and more of those uh, calls coming in about uh, cougars being sighted wow wow okay so did you ever find any evidence of the, of the cougars being here or if not, do you know of anybody else, if anybody else ever found any cougars when you went out to do these investigations? There didn't seem to be any solid evidence collected, although back then there was not really a database uh, because we didn't think we had cougars. So, uh, you know, complaints or sightings, supposing sightings were more or less uh, just put on the back burner. Eventually, uh, I myself uh, investigated a, a complaint or, or, or a sighting and uh, took measurements and photos of tracks in the snow. And I was, uh, that along with the interviews I did, I uh, was getting uh, pretty convinced that maybe we do have those animals, those large cats. But there, to my knowledge, there's never been an actual uh, physical sample uh, to prove that we did have them. So in your time, when, while you were working as a wildlife officer. Did you truly believe we had these cats or did you believe that people were misidentifying the, their sightings and stuff? Well, Charlie, you know, I was kind of on the fence with it. Uh, it's uh, one of those things, you know, uh, when you deal with science and you, you, you need the actual proof to definitely say, you know, you do or you don't have them. And, I, was, I have to say for many years I was uh, sitting on the fence with all this and you have to keep an open mind as an investigator of course and there were many times when uh, I found that I was I guess coming on the side of the fence where I started to believe it you know Wow so this next question is why I am here uh, did you ever see one in person and if yes could you tell us about that sighting well that was a day I'll never forget and uh, yes is the answer. Uh, myself and uh, two other salmon anglers were with me. We were in the Upper Humber up uh, in, way back in the country going in salmon fishing, kind of into the heart of the country, I guess we say, west of, uh, east of, uh, back of Rossmore and uh, Park. And we were coming out the road. It was a beautiful uh, summer day in July. This was the summer before last and uh, cougars were the last thing on our mind and uh, we I saw at a distance first what I thought was a, a black bear sitting up on the side of the road 
and so we momentarily went down a little dip in the road. We were driving out in the shop on the way home. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon. And uh, when we popped up on the horizon, well, bless me, right in front of us, sitting on the side of the road, was a cougar. And it was like brain freeze. It was uh, what I thought was a black bear was actually a cougar. And it was black. I won't say uh, coal black, but like kind of a charcoal color black. A large cougar and when we saw it or my two companions and myself just were dumbfounded and it, it, it just ran right across basically in front of the truck maybe 30 40 yards from from the front of the truck and uh, it was a clear day it was uh, the Sun wasn't in our eyes and it wasn't uh, it was broad daylight about 3 30 in the afternoon and uh, we were dumbfounded three of us kind of looked at each other and, and it was like uh, I believe we all screamed at the same time. That's a cougar, and uh, it was uh, it was quite a moment. Wow! wow. And it, it took us a few minutes just to gather our thoughts. You know, As people say, "Well, why didn't you get a picture?" Well, we did have cell phones with us and stuff, but for that minute or uh, seconds, I should say, it just never. You know, our brains were still trying to uh, figure out what we what we saw. Wicked. Do you think? You could have misidentified this, like uh, could it could have been a lynx or a fox or a coyote, maybe even a house cat. And you, like, uh, there's skeptics out there, and I, I know I was treated with a lot of skepticism when I had my sightings. Do you think what you saw was was an actual large cougar-like cat or a cougar, um, or do you think you misidentified? Could have you could have you misidentified it? No, I certainly didn't uh, misidentify it, uh, and I understand, like you, you know, the people are critics, and and they have a right to be. I mean, if it was the middle of July and I looked at the window and it was 25 degrees out, and I told you it was snowing out, I think you'd have to come look at the window with me just to verify what I just said, because yeah. you need to see it with your own eyes. And uh, no, this was uh, a very close-up front seat uh, view of the cougar. Uh, I've handled I guess all species of wildlife in the province for many years live trapping uh, dispatched animals dead ones uh, you know and lynx foxes coyotes uh, you know I've been around them all for many many times and uh, no this was definitely a cougar it was a long large cat with a long but the tail must have been almost three feet long I guess curled up on, on the end and uh, yeah, no, there's no mistaking. You know, there's, uh, we have one cougar in Newfoundland, and uh, I can assure you of that, and that's in the Upper Umber area, and it's honestly died in the last year or so, it's still there. Uh, well, I, I personally know uh, from first hand that we have more than one, and there are sightings north, south, east, and west, and there always have been. That must have been some exciting uh, drive from that point on you guys must have just been reliving that that whole sighting in, in your head yes that was a moment uh, i guess we'll never forget it was uh it was just a a, a moment and a flash in time that, that's frozen in my brain and uh whatever people think or, or wish to say i mean i know for a fact and my two companions that we did see the cougar that day no dispute so yeah it was quite the feeling it's it's never left me and i don't think it ever will no, no, it, it's for anybody who has personally seen one. For me, there was that moment of, of okay, what did I just see? And, and I tried to make it into something that I knew existed. It was like, was that a fox? No, it was way too, way too big to be a fox. Uh, was it a house cat? No, way too big to be a house cat because at this distance, a house cat would look like a rabbit on the side of the road, not like, not like the cougar that we had seen. You know, and then he had the long tail. So, and, and you know, you think of a fox, and the tail is bushy when it first comes off the fox, and then it kind of tapers down and stuff. So, you know, this had a long rope-like tail. You know, exactly, and, and yeah. very uniform in shape over the distance of it. You know, it was yeah. There's no, know, there's no mistaking it. No mistake. No, and there's no other species there in, on this island that, that you can mistake it for. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lynx. If you're familiar with lynx, I mean, they don't have a tail at all. And uh, no, there's, there's, there's no animals here that you can mistake a cougar for, not uh, when you're up close looking at it, definitely not. So what, what do you think it was? Do you, do you think it was a, um, a released cat, uh, maybe somebody's house pet, a cougar that was brought in from elsewhere? Uh, they say there's no such thing as black cougars. 
uh, or, or what do you think you saw? You're, you're saying cougar, we're talking cougar, I believe I've seen a cougar. So do you think it could be the, maybe perhaps the eastern cougar or? Yeah, I, uh, there's so much unknown about those mountain animals, mountain cats, that uh, I really don't know. I mean, I, I don't claim to be an expert on, on uh, mountain cats. I know it's uh, uh, not a domestic, it's, it's definitely a, a cougar, but where it comes from its origin at uh, this time, I really don't know. There's a lot of stories. I could, could go a long time talking about stories uh, they supposedly got here, but uh, I guess until we, you know, we, we, we get the solid proof and the DNA work and stuff that probably we, will, we won't know until then, but it will happen. It was going to happen. That leads me right into my uh, next question. Uh, what would it take for, for the wildlife department to admit that we have cougars here? Like, has there ever been anybody inside? Because you had your sighting once you retired. Yes. 37 years of service never had a sighting, sent out to investigate sightings and, and you know, was on and off the fence as, as you said earlier as to whether or not they were here, you know? Um, what, what, what would it take for the wildlife department? What, would, what evidence would they need to come forward and say that they're actually here? Well, you know, it's like anything in science. The biologist has to see proof, physical proof. I mean, uh, I believe more and more they're starting to realize that yes, there definitely is something to these sightings. And that was, over the years, there's never been a, a proper database or a proper collection of, of uh, sightings uh, kept, but now I understand over the last 20 years ago, or so there has been. Uh, and so they're, they are looking at it. I, I, I believe they're being upfront. I don't think there's any cover up, as some people would say, about having those animals. It's just that they need proof. and. Uh, until they get the physical proof, I guess they can't really say one way or the other. <laughs> well, that, that, was a, that was a really good answer uh, because my next question was, do, do you think that the wildlife department could be covering up uh, evidence that perhaps the eastern cougar is here uh, or, you know, you know, are they being upfront with, with people who are they giving us all the information that uh, we probably deserve to have or would like to have? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I don't see why it would be a cover-up or anything like that. Those are reputable people, you know, and uh, and they do good work. It's just that uh, it's going to take uh, some physical proof, I guess, or somebody will eventually have the proof on a, on a live cam or, you know, on a desk cam or something. Uh, it, and there's more of these things on the go these days. So we will, we will eventually see the proof. Well, Winston, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, there's been many sightings. I've recorded close to 100, if not more than 100 sightings in, in the first two years after I had my second sighting in, uh, I think it was uh, the 10th of September, uh, 2019. So uh, in that time, I, I, re I recorded, I'm sure it's over 100 sightings. I looked and seen what the, the wildlife had recorded in the last few, you know, number of years when they started keeping records and I think they were up to 81 or 89 they're in the 80s yes, I can't remember yeah. exactly high 80s or low 80s uh, and, and then uh, we got that Facebook page there yes um, Richard knows where he started it up and uh, you know there there's been many many sightings come through there and that's how I found out about you and, and, and your sighting uh, but I haven't recorded or tracked any of those and then there's a lot of people um, I know my first sighting I didn't come forward with it because I didn't know if anybody believed me there's so much skepticism I know I've had people in my family uh, say that they seen cougars and I asked them to show me a picture what do you think they saw because uh, in my mind I thought you yeah, had to have seen the links had to have seen yeah. anything but you know what I mean yes and then they would go right straight to the, I uh, had a, a, a book on all the mammals in North America and they go straight to the cougary. And it's like, exactly. that, that yeah. is, that's what I seen right there. Yes. Yeah. Right? There's been a number of sightings. I don't know what we're at now for recorded sightings, but I'm wondering, you know, I would have to think that there's probably a lot more people out there who have seen these cats and we're, we're you know, too afraid for the skepticism to bring forward their sightings. I will wonder, you know, what percentage of, of the recorded sightings 
are actually the amount of sightings that we've had over the years here on the island. Yeah, I, I would say you're right. There's probably a lot of sightings uh, that has never been called in. Uh, and I would encourage anybody who has a sighting to certainly report because there is a database on it now. I know myself, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have said anything if I were, if I were there alone that day. Uh, two summers ago, I I really don't know, but there was three of us in the truck, and uh, I mean, you know, three people seeing the same thing. It's uh, hard to dispute that, but uh, definitely there are. I have talked to people over the years as well uh, from my work, you know, before I retired, that would say yes, I did see cougar back a number of years ago, but I, w I wouldn't say anything because I was afraid they'd tell me I'm crazy. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, no. uh, and, I, and I don't blame people for, uh, I mean, I've had people tell me I'm probably crazy or I, I thought I saw something that I didn't see. Yeah. You know, I mean, in my own mind, uh, I know what I saw, uh, but uh, I don't blame people for, for saying that because, uh, like I said, if uh, something we don't, we're not supposed to have here, so until you actually see the proof, you know, that you're entitled to be skeptical about it, certainly. Yeah, oh, 100%. Absolutely. 100%. Oh, well, uh, Winston, I got to thank you so much for uh, this in this interview, your time. Uh, I was treated to a, a meal, like a three-course meal when I got here. Uh, a great cup of tea and, and uh, a phenomenal hospitality. But um, getting ready to wrap this up now. So is do you have anything else you would like to add or, or say about uh, these large cat sightings? No, thank you, Charlie, for coming. And... Uh you know uh, doing this little clip and hopefully it'll open the eyes of more people that, uh, that we'll see i believe there will be a lot more sightings in the future be more people on the go these days you know with cameras and stuff and i know i didn't get a chance to get a a, a, a picture but maybe somebody will or collect some other type of, of evidence so uh, thank you for what you're doing and, and putting this out there and i really appreciate you coming by and, and if there's anything i can do to help out in the future i certainly will be pleased to do so well, uh, you know what, uh, in, in having meeting and having meeting you and, and, and whatnot now, uh, I can see us getting together and, and maybe even having a fishing trip and, and God knows what else, you know, uh, but definitely maybe uh, collaborating and, and, and going out and, and, and seeing what we can find, maybe putting out some trail cameras and stuff. I got a few trail cameras now, I think I'm up to eight, so I don't mind putting those trail cameras out anywhere. So if you hear of a sighting out here, because in the in the research that i've done on, on the cougars uh and and it varies up to about two weeks but mostly they they, they like to the to, to kill they're a uh, what do they call it a hyper carnivore and when you talk about a hyper carnivore you're talking about something that's 70 percent or more of its diet is strictly meat right and they've had cougars tested that were up to 99 percent of their diet was strictly meat they will eat fungi and and other stuff like that there right and and, and fruits and like berries and stuff like that there foliage, yeah. foliage and stuff right but their uh, hyper carnivore was known as a hyper carnivore and so the window of opportunity when we're getting sightings is very limited you know yes. because uh, they they like to uh from the most of the studies that i've been reading and I've done a lot of research since I've seen my sightings because like you, I'm definitely no expert in, in cougars, but when you see them, now you gotta start digging in and find out what you can on them. And what I found was uh, they like to make a, a new kill every five to seven days, but some, some reports go up to about two weeks. So uh, we have a very narrow window of, because I, I found when you get one sighting, sometimes within a day or two you'll get multiple sightings from that one area yes. and i think perhaps this is and this is only me speculating now that perhaps a cougar has made a kill whether it be a moose or a caribou or, or whatever it is and he, he's in this area feeding on it now for the next uh couple of days few days so did, did the sighting occur on day five did the sighting occur day one you know when was this sighting so we have a very i find um they got a wide range they the very cougars big, very big range yes. very very big range so hard to pinpoint hard and hard and hard to narrow them down so the window of opportunity to uh, get report of a sighting and get cameras out in in, in an area where you, like newfoundland is so so much dense uh, trees and, and stuff yes. like you know you can be looking at a bog and i've done this many times yes 
where uh, you've looked at it for two hours, you see nothing, and then you look out uh, two minutes later and there's three moose standing out I know, there. Yeah, where did yeah, they come from? Yeah, I know, yeah. And those cougars, uh, Charlie, I mean, they're somewhat nocturnal as well, of course. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are moving around in the nighttime. Although they do get caught out, like in my case, whereas that was in the middle of the day. But that's not the norm, I don't think. So, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and it's, it's a big island, and, uh, you know, uh, even places where there's a lot of cougars, like uh, California and places like that in western states and Canada, I mean, there's uh, three to five thousand, I believe, estimated population in California, and uh, over 99 point point something uh, percent of people have never ever saw one. So, you know, uh, what's your chances? They're very elusive. I feel like I won the lotto. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. The Cougar Lotto of Newfoundland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Winston, again, thank you so much. Well, first off, thank you for your 37 years of service uh, to protecting the wildlife and, and the habitat and everything that we all enjoy. Everybody who goes out doors all the youtubers out there but all the outdoor enthusiasm uh, enthusiasts whether you're hikers or bird watchers or whatever you're doing out there hunters moose hunting it's people like uh, winston that we gotta thank for having the opportunity to do that and protecting all, all all these resources that we get to go out and enjoy on a daily basis and an annual basis so thank you so much for that thank you for doing this interview and it was a pleasure meeting you and uh oh geez if, if anybody has a sighting out there, reach out to me, reach out to Winston, uh, reach out to anybody um, that you know is, has been has an interest in, in these cougars and, and are recording it. You can go to Facebook and it's uh, uh, Unidentified Large Cats of Newfoundland yes. or Newfoundland Unidentified Large Cats or something like that. You can look me up, Charlie White, I'm on Facebook. Friend me, send me a message, private message or whatever. Uh, I don't put anybody on camera or give out any names and you can go back and you can look at my channel for that uh, I'll, I'll keep you uh, uh, I'll, I'll wear the brunt of, of all the skepticism I don't I don't mind that I got wide shoulders and with I was my dad took me in the woods since I was three years old I'll be 55 next month so uh, you know I, I got 52 years of, of outdoor experience here over half a century yeah. of, of being out in the, in the woods with my dad, learning from my dad, learning from my grandfather. You know, I know what I've seen and there's nobody out there, I guarantee you, that can convince me otherwise. But uh, Winston, I think you have something to add. No, well, thanks again, Charlie, and it's been a pleasure. And uh, to remind all your viewers to keep your eyes open. Absolutely. <laughs> and Absolutely. you never know what you're gonna see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and with that being said, I know when I used to go out in the woods, I was always looking for caribou and moose and stuff like that there. Do you, have you changed what you're looking for now when you're in, 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 uh, in the wildlife habitat? Are you, are you looking for cougars? Absolutely, yeah. all the time now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I time. find myself stopping near yeah. rock faces and stuff and, yeah. and, and seeing if anything's out there sunning itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have an experience like that, you, when you know in your own mind there are cougars here, and then you're going to be watching it for more, obviously. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And, and thank you, Winston. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. This was an honor for me to come out here and meet him. And we've talked about many other stories, backstories and, and stuff uh, in, the, in the time that I was here. And we watched a wonderful land and sea piece. I don't know if I can find it. I'll look for it on YouTube. If I can find that uh, Eastern Cougar. Uh, it was uh, land and sea. It was done in land here. and sea. I, I edited. I've edited on my PVR. It was uh, aired a couple of years ago. If you want to go in, I'm sure you can go in on the land and sea uh, website and probably dig it up and, and watch it. Yeah. Very interesting show about the uh, cougars, and eastern mountain cats, in the maritime provinces. Now they have DNA evidence that they are in Nova Scotia and PEI. I mean, we didn't have cougars, we didn't have coyotes a few years ago. PI yeah, in New Brunswick. I'm sorry, New Brunswick yeah, and yeah. Nova Scotia. Yeah. And the uh, same thing with the uh, coyotes here, we didn't have them until a few years ago. So, what's to say? I mean, uh, that they didn't come here more recently or if they were always there, that's something that's, uh, that's yet to be proven. Still up in the, uh, in, in to be proven, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, thanks again, Winston. I'm much, much honored and it was a great pleasure. Uh, I, I know what I believe and I think you guys know what I believe. I think uh, uh, the cougars here, the cats here that we have here on the island that people are seeing, that range in color from tan to black, I believe they were here since time immortal. That, that, that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much. Thank you. So how was that, eh? I told you I was excited to get out and, and uh, meet this guy and, and uh, do this interview for you guys. And I tell you what, uh, he's salt of the earth. Winston uh, NC, uh, he's, he's a real gem. Uh, kind of within moments of uh, you know meeting him face to face, we talked several times on the phone. But within moments of meeting him face to face, I felt like I've known him my entire life, you know, uh, geez, he treated me to a wonderful dinner and uh, dessert and oh my gosh, it was it was amazing. So uh, Winston, thank you so much again for agreeing to uh, to meet with me and, and to do this uh, video. And uh, you know, like we said earlier, uh, I try to hide people, people who want, had sightings and are afraid to come forward. If you want to send me a private message, I will record uh, where you've seen it, what you've seen, and all that stuff, uh, but uh, your, your name will, will not be told. I, I got wide shoulders, I don't mind uh, uh, taking uh, the brunt of the skepticism, it doesn't bother me any, because you know what, I know what's here, uh, I believe they've always been here, and uh, I, I got no problem in, in uh, saying, saying so, and uh, I don't mind skepticism. Skepticism is healthy, but skeptics, I like. They, they keep us uh, digging and researching and uh, trying to come up with the proof needed to prove that these uh, cats are in fact here. Uh, they're alive and well, they're healthy, they're being spotted from north, south, east and west, coast to coast uh, uh, along the Newfoundland shores. So, hope you enjoyed the video. And it was, uh, it was truly, truly my pleasure to, to do this video for you guys. So I'll see you guys all on the next adventure. I'm going that way.